Today is the 11th day of February 2015, and we are here with Barbara from Oroville. Welcome, Barbara. <laughs> Welcome. And uh, you, we usually begin by asking people how they first heard of Sri Aurobindo and Mother. Mm. Can you tell us that Yes, story? I can. Yeah, for me it was, I did not hear, it was in a bookshop. And so I was looking in a bookshop and then I saw the book of Sri Aurobindo. It was in Germany and it was the synthesis and the divine life. And immediately I was caught by something. And because I was interested in yoga already, but at that time I had a different view. And the picture of Sri Aurobindo, which was on the front side of the book, it was a bit different to what I was used to. And so I looked at it and I could not really understand it, what I saw. And then I bought the books and then I took them home. And that was the first contact with Sri Aurobindo. I read the lines and then I could not really understand because I found the sentence a bit long. Mm. So I thought, hmm, shorter sentence maybe would be better. <laughs> but then after half an hour or so, I realized that I saw the things. And it was very exact what I saw. And then I read the sentence again. Yeah, and then I saw, aha, it works like that. So this was my first impression from Sri Aurobindo. How do you mean you saw? I had it above the head. What, what was it? The above? vibration and oh. the vision. Uh, it was very, I had no, uh, I, I just did not understand the I sentence. Yeah. And then one half an hour later or so, I suddenly saw the whole thing, what he has written. And then it was very interesting for me because it was very exact what I saw. And that was the first time that later I understood. He writes in a mantric language. So it is the, the experience comes like that. But and what year was this, Barbara? Hmm? What year was this? Oh, it was probably when I was about 30 years old. And then it was 70s. 70s. Yes, a little bit. Yes. Beginning of Oroville. Yes, 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 yes. It was at yes. that time. Yes. And then in, yeah, in 79, I was the first time uh, in Oroville. Okay. Yeah. So you were living and working in Germany? Yes. And you started reading the books? Yeah, it was like that. That um, one, I must say, I had from the beginning of my life, I had experiences of the Shakti, what one calls the Shakti. And I had it mainly in nature and when I was alone and then I knew that everything what is alive is done by the Shakti. So I saw something from behind what really is the grace of everything and mainly in nature it was easy for me to experience that. And so then later I Professionally, I started psychosomatics and also physiotherapy because I wanted to do something with the body also. And, um, but then I knew very quickly that I was not interested in that exactly. And then it was the yoga which came. Mm. And at that time, when I was, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was at that time when I also found then the books of Sri Aurobindo. And then I, I, can, I must say my experience was very good. But at the same time, my memory was a little bit different of what I somehow memorized of Indian yoga. Mm -hmm. and, and I had another impression. It was more of the soul, of the luminosity. And sometimes when I saw pictures of Indian gurus or so, then I could recognize something. 
And then later, a bit later, I got also a connection to an Indian guru, a Kriya Yogi, who, yeah, who was, uh, one can say, who, are, who had realized the soul, and he, he was teaching these kind of things. And that was the first contact which I looked for, but Sri Aurobindo was always there. And he was also connected to Sri Aurobindo. Um, because he knew that Sri Aurobindo is the future, so to say, from our point of view. And, but I was more busy with the past, with what was coming from the past and what is also necessary for the future. Now I can say it like this, but at that time I, I was just experiencing what happened to me. And with this teacher, I had a, um, a strong relationship for six to eight years. In, and in the 60s? It what? was, when was it? Yeah, that is always a bit difficult yeah, now to I remember know, these I things. Yes. Um, that was uh, 60s, I uh, was 63, no, 73, no, 79 it was, 79 I was in Oroville. And in the moment, I don't remember exactly how it was. But it was before 79? It, it started, I think, a bit before 79, mm -hmm. and it went into the 80s. This is, this is sure now. <laughs> and, yeah. So, so then you left Germany to come to Orville? Yeah, I, I must say also, before, I, yeah, when I was a child, I must say it also, because yes. that was the main thing also, I always saw a different world. It was a luminous world in a, and in a tropical climate. That was, and I was in northern Germany, it was more gray and raining and things like that. And also with all different nations, all different kinds of people were there. And this was my inner experience of the Earth's life. It, and it, it was a world that you were seeing? Completely, yeah. It was life, what I was uh -huh. seeing. And when I was a child, because it was tropical, I thought, this is Africa. And uh, then I wanted always to go to Africa. I was a very small child when I had this thing. But this thing, I have to go to Africa, stayed with me. So when I went to Africa, I was also about 30 years old. Then it, and it was at that time what happened to me that I came to South Africa, which was an apartheid system, and we know what was happening there. And then I found that Africa, what I see, is very different to what was in the world, what, what I was encountering. And then, but the, the, the impression of the Shakti was enormous in Africa. But it was the Shakti in nature. Uh -huh. mm? And it was very, very strong. And then I knew from that moment on, I knew I, mu I must really do the yoga. One cannot do anything else anymore. And therefore also I started to mix my professional stuff, which I was not really feeling good with, with the yoga. And then this yogi came. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, and so my work was then always accompanied by what I learned from yoga. And this was in Germany? That was in Germany. Mm -hmm. I had my own practice at that mm -hmm. time, and so I could do, uh, I could find out how, to, how I want to work. And that was very good for some while. But at the same time, what was always missing, that I was in a city, and I wanted to live really on earth, so to say, and not in a society where everything is pre-organized and so I for the work the working period was good somehow but uh, I knew that I cannot forever do that yeah and when did you first hear about mother uh, what with mother was connected with Sri Aurobindo very strongly I saw that and both the expressions of both of them I saw immediately that they had a very different kind of expression to the traditional yogis. Mm? And I wondered what is this exactly. And from the traditional yoga, 
I was really getting a lot, but at the same time I knew that something is missing. So I knew it immediately, and it was, when I express it, it was that I got a lot of joy and also memories, but I found it not, uh, what is it? Um, yeah, it was not detailed enough. Because I, I found that, for example, cosmic consciousness or what is something, what is there, I could appreciate that, but for me, I, I saw that they also, for example, the different masters did not really know what the other masters do. And so, and I found that a bit funny, that I think there is something missing. <laughs> <laughs> when it's special, specialization. Hmm? So each one could, uh, each one said, yes, I have the way to God, and, 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 and I could appreciate also their ways. But I found when one does not know more what the other ones do, or more also all the activities of each being, then something is missing. And that became very obvious for me. And then I really started to reach Sri Aurobindo. But, but I was already prepared from the yoga, from the traditional side. And then I was so relieved with Sri Aurobindo because I found exactly what I was looking for. It was like that. Because he is so detailed. And I, 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 I knew that something like this, otherwise it's not really enough. And yeah, and then I started really to, I left the other one, the, the teacher, mm. and then I started to really go fully with Sri Aurobindo, and I was good prepared already. And then I started with the synthesis of yoga, and ah, I was relieved. Everything was there. <laughs> what other books did you read at that time of Sri Aurobindo? Yeah, I'm I, I all I can say. All. Yeah, because I was really interested. Maybe not everything to the end, yeah. but um, but I read because it was really the thing what I wanted to do. The books were available in German or in English. They were both. I could. Um, oh. It was also from uh, from Oroville. There was there were people in Germany in Munich. I was in Munich, and they brought the books from and one could and sold them there from the ashram. So I could have the originals, and that was it then. So then, you decided to move. No. Not yeah. Uh, in '79. No, no. In '79, I came to Oroville. For a visit. Yeah, to visit. Okay. Yeah, to visit, and I loved the place very much. And, um, but somehow it was not, somehow it, I was not ready to go there. And then what happened, I, I went to Spain, mm. but I, the time is a little bit, I, I have not that all clear now. <laughs> but uh, there was a moment when I did not want to stay in the city anymore and I also knew that I cannot stay anymore. And then, at that time, my husband and me, we went to an island in Spain. And the thing was, we wanted to try if one can just live according to one's intuitions. And, um, and for me, it was very important for him also, but for me, I think more, uh, to live really on the earth, not in the city. And so we found a place also and there we could have our own garden and things like that. And that worked very well because what I wanted to find out, to have a place where all the different levels of the, one can say, of the vertical life are there. And then on the horizontal level, the beings who live there in nature and other beings. So if one can just live like that, and I was influenced much from Oroville, but I did it individually. And that was also a good time, and um, 
we could live very well there and many people also were coming and then were other friends coming and also took a piece of land and things like that. So it was for eight years there. Oh. Yes. And there Sri Aurobindo took completely over, Sri Aurobindo and mother. And I had all the books and the music and all that, but I thought it was for me at that time that I enter into that. But uh, it was not only for me, they pressed me very strongly to, because people asked me about yoga. And yeah, I, I thought Sri Aurobindo's yoga, now I am starting with it. It's only for me, but then they pressed that I do group work. And because I had the, the music and the tapes and things of mother, so we did that there. And that was very good also. But after eight years, I knew now on this island that's over. Yes, the individual stuff is done. I really, the, it was individually, even if we were a little community yeah. sometimes and things like that, but it was, each one did his individual life. Yeah. And then, then it was really over for me and I knew I cannot do it anymore anywhere. And then Sri Aurobindo said, and now you go to Aurobi. He, said, he said very clearly, yeah. He, I, I wondered before <laughs> why I am always in the West still because my interest was to go somewhere else, and Auroville was always with me, but I knew also Auroville, I, there was, it was not the moment or something. And I wondered, why have I to be in the West? What is this? But I felt that I was, my concentration was on the place where I was, and these eight years were also very good, and it was, Strong also connected to Auroville because our, our place was going to the east and it was on a hill and then there, were on, there was only the ocean in front and so I always had the feeling that I got the vibration of Mat Matrimandir very strong, much stronger than even now when I am in Auroville since 20 years. <laughs> It was very strong for me. And in that sense, it was undisturbed. Here we know in Auroville, ne, all the quarrels and things, what comes up. There, it was just the matrimandir. <laughs> so, <laughs> in that oh. sense, it was a beautiful time there. And I also, and what I tried to find out if one can really live that, just the vertical levels with all the different potentials down to the earth and then the environment which is on the horizontal levels. And somehow it was very good experience. But then it was over, then I knew that was for that moment I had to do that. But also then and then I thought, yeah, what now? And then it was the first time that I could see uh, because it was like this, as if here in the third eye, something, and I knew it was the hand of Sri Aurobindo, it made a thing like that, and I could no more concentrate on the island. And so, and he and I said, now you go to Auroville. And then I was, relatively very happy to go to Auroville and uh, because it was really now the moment. I had finished the other things and um, so I was very ready to go to Auroville. Yeah, <laughs> and then, but when I thought about it afterwards, then I thought, oh my God, what shall I do in Auroville? I did not know what I shall do in Auroville because I knew it already. I was several times there and now what, in between. What about your husband? He was the same. With my husband, it was always like this. We, we changed often places. And uh, we were always at the same time ready without speaking to each other mm -hmm. to go. That was perfect all the time. So I waited to see what 
what was happening to him. I did not say anything. And some time later, he said, I think now we, we are finished here. I said, yes, now we are finished here. And then it was clear also. So then... What then, to do in Oroville? Yeah, what to do in Oroville. And my vision was, <laughs> because I knew it, I said, oh my God, such a small point in the world and such a small point also in India. And then these people, <laughs> because I know that they say all the time what one has to do, and um, I thought it does not fit to me so much. And uh, so, and then I thought, yeah, and then India from the past, I had very good experiences. <laughs> but how it is now, and then this little, it was always this small point of all of it. What is this? What can I do there? But uh, approximately what year did you move to Oroville? When? Oh, yes, when? It was in 96. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, yeah, and then I, I asked Shreya Obindo, I, 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 yeah, the question was very strong from my side. Yeah, and then... Um, <laughs> In the night, I was suddenly awake, but not quite fully. I, I was in my room, I knew where I was, but at the same time, there was so much presence of Sherobindo and mother, uh, very, very strong. And then it was like this, that he was guiding, and somehow we were going into the universal part, in the universal uh, conscious, not consciousness, we were going in the universe and the universal consciousness was very strong, but very strong as a presence of Sri Aurobindo and mother. And, um, and what I felt then at that, in the consciousness, I said, yeah, when, when it is like that, I can go everywhere. And, <laughs> And then we went higher and higher, and I saw that also in the universe, some star systems, they were also changing the new things. I could had experiences of the light and the light vibrations, and this told me, ah, yeah, new things are coming. But this I, I have forgotten afterwards. I cannot remember because that was... In the moment, it was there, but it was not really important. So it was that I, this vastness everywhere and the full presence, and it was perfect somehow. You spoke to Sri Aurobindo? No, it you was all, only consciousness. Only consciousness. The, it was all going through the consciousness. And then it went down again, <laughs> and I landed in Repo Beach, and I was suddenly again on the earth, what I like to be. <laughs> and then it was all luminous. It was this where the elements, we know, the beach there and the water and the air and the sun and the luminosity of the elements. And then there was the white city and, uh, of Pondicherry. I saw it white and, and it was just more the soul experience. And then there was a wave and an empty shell was rolling over the sand and that message was the body is like an empty shell. Okay, and that was it. That was the answer at that time. But as experience, it was a strong experience and so, and with that I was very happy that because that is mainly what I want to do, I want to become and I want to be, and live from there. And so then I was sure I can go. And so, and then I went, or we went, my husband and me, and then we came and uh, we started in Oroville. Uh, we, we bought a piece of land for Oroville we could, we sold our place we had there, so we could 
buy another piece of land for Oroville. And then we started a, com a, a community there because also people from the island who also were with us at that time, they also wanted to come. Mm. And yeah, and then we started with uh, our community is Ritam. Ritam. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, that was the name we gave. And um, yeah, and now I am at Ritam. <laughs> And what are you doing now? I am what doing have you been doing all these years? All these years, yeah. It's always, my life is like this, that always people are coming. And, and because I, I have the training of a therapist, I, I can work like that. But I do it not like a therapist. It's not for me interesting. For me, I want to live it. I want to live what yoga is. And so my life is more an expression of what I live. But then people come, and because I am trained also, so I can, yeah, they come and then I do. Now I would call it uh, consciousness and energy work on the basis of integral yoga from Sri Aurobindo and Mother. Yeah, and that I do since 20 years. I see. Yes. And first it was like this, that everybody said, we don't need it, and this and that. But then I said, I do green work. It was very easy. And I said, yeah, yeah, I do green work, and we do green work, and, uh, and yeah. I'm very interested in your experience with the earth. Yes. Can you speak about yeah. that a little bit? Yeah, for me, the, I have a strong connection to the earth and to the subtle earth. It's mainly the subtle earth uh, by which I, and it's also the body and the subtle body. And so I see many things which are very beautiful uh, in matter. But it is not yet realized. One can also see all the other things. So for me, the integral yoga is uh, very important. and. I am very, very happy because I, I know that it is a very strong privilege to have a master like Sherobindo and mother because they are really um, connected to the evolution of the earth from the beginning of the earth. So they give all the details what is necessary for this moment what was in the past of the earth and what will come. So this is also something what for me is um, main interest. Yeah, and in the other yogas I could see that it was not like that. The earth was not so important. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Yes. And for me it's very much important. Yes. And so to, and because I had that also from the beginning and I love animals, I love nature, I love to be with human beings, and also now the transformation, which is so important. Many people have difficulties now. They think nothing works and it's all is a chaos and da 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 da. And then to work these things out, that is, yeah. So I feel good with everything. <laughs> and, and the Matrimandia chamber? Yeah, the Matrimandia chamber, I go there, but I'm not regularly going to Matrimandia. I'm very happy that Matrimandia is there and, and, uh, and that it is really the center and the soul of Oroville, but it is not for me necessary to go there so often because I do it in my place, in my garden, I have everything also there. And when I have the feeling I must go to Matrimandia, then I go. <laughs> and do you come to the ashram? Yeah, in the beginning I came very often to the ashram because I needed the vibrational field. Now when our place is also good, it was not in the beginning. Uh, it was a mm. place where you had to, there was no tree and nothing and you had to put everything. So then I was very happy to go to the ashram. Now it's also very good for me in Auroville. I, and I have friends in the ashram, so I go. Mm. Have you known some of the older ashramites? Yes, sure. Yes, they were still alive when I came. Ah. Nirod Baran and Am So Amadim. you met him? Yes, yes. And did you have anything to say about him? 
Yeah, for me it was, I had not so much a personal contact with him, but I, with the Dashans, and so I, I, I saw them very often, and for me it was really very, very beautiful, the atmosphere at that time. Yes. And how do you feel the atmosphere in Oroville now? Yeah, for, that is, I feel the atmosphere is chaotic, the, mm -hmm. uh, the outer at atmosphere from all sides, and, um, but that is not very much disturbing me because I know that after the democracy, and I think they break everywhere, the systems break, chaos is coming. And out of the chaos, we can, if we are creative and truly creative, the real thing will come. We saw Sri Aurobindo called it anarchy and divine anarchy. And I think it is this moment has started. It's very chaotic, but it means also it is a creative moment. So everything is ready to evolve and, and there's a lot of light now everywhere which wants to go into the future. I think one can feel it that the future becomes, comes nearer, so to say. <laughs> mm? And in that sense, I feel very good also in the chaos because I'm not disturbed by it. And that is mainly now also my function. So many people are, Aurobillians come to me because they feel very disturbed and very uncomfortable, yeah? And then... <laughs> <laughs> in, <Yeah>. your, <laughs> in your experience with gardening, raising vegetables and all, have you had contact with some of these spirits? I have not so much contact with the spirits. I have so, sometimes, for me, it's the beauty and the grace, and the grace of the mother, the Shakti. <sighs> They are all the beings and everything. I love how, how, yeah, how everything is made. For example, the, the beauty of leaves and trees and yeah, everything. And India has beautiful plants and yes. beautiful light. And it, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> well, this has been really wonderful to have yeah. you here. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to ask you, about your vision of the future, next 10 or 20 years. 10 or 20 years, a short vision. Yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, my vision is that the light becomes stronger and that whatever comes up, the light is there for that. And if we look to the light, then we are able to be s stronger than the difficulties. If we don't look to the light and the light of Sri Aurobindo and Mother, then it can become difficult. But if we look to the light and live that, there's, yeah, it may be hard, uncomfortable or whatever, but it will work. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good. That was it? <laughs> if you have anything more, we would no, love to hear. No, I stopped.